Israel has quite a long history at the Eurovision Song Contest, so why not explore it a little further? Sup, you fools? Matt, ESC United, your favorite Eurovision channel. So, we all know that Israel won this year the contest, so next year we'll all get to travel to the country. How exciting is that? So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to take a closer look at Israel in the Eurovision Song Contest. They first joined the contest in 1973, I believe, so they had a bunch of entries so far. So I am going to react to all entries from Israel in Eurovision. Keep in mind, I have listened to them at some point, so I am not seeing them for the very first time, but it's been a while, years for most for the most part, and I'll share my thoughts with you. So let's do this together, shall we? Okay, I'm ready and all situated. Let's get this thing started. This particular clip only has songs included from 1973 to 2014, so I'll do the rest separately, but let's uh, hit that play button and see where this is taking us. Traveling back in time. Yes. That's how you enter the contest, with a bang. That was a great song. I really like it. Just a great way to start your, like, your historic run in the contest. Huh. I don't really remember this one, actually. It's not that significant. But they look so 70s. That's a plus. I mean, look, they look like the Jewish Beatles. Huh. Yeah, not a classic, I guess. Meh. Don't remember this one either. Meh. Nah, kind of forgettable, huh? Whatever. Okay, this is another 70s song. Just nothing really to talk about. Just gets lost in the crowded field. I mean, no one talks about this song today. Alright, another great song. What's her name? I Ilanit? Her music is totally my cup of tea. This definitely was more than 11th place. Hmm. Oh! Incoming controversial opinion. I never cared for the song. No, I get it. Don't get me wrong. I understand why it won, and it's a classic now. So it's, but it's just I was never into the melody, so it didn't click with me. But hey, oh, on the other hand, I'm totally into this one. Love, love, love this one. By the way, Americans know that song. Um, uh, Jewish Americans, that is, um, to this day. That's really cool. I'm a big, big fan of this one. Uh, Oh, yes. So, I, by the way, I'm a huge fan of Israel in the 80s. So many good songs. That includes this one. Nice way to start the 80s. <laughs> Alright, I have to say, I love the Israeli choreography of the 80s. It's like a recurring theme. Uh, it's like aerobics on steroids. <laughs> this is a fun song, though. One of my favorite Israeli entries of all time. Oh my god, I love this song is dear to my heart. Ofra Haza, amazing singer, fantastic voice, big star. Love, love, love the song. Well, and the dancing, of course. Ugh. Ah, more crazy dancing. I told ya. Yes. Super catchy and 80s hair. How can you go wrong? All right, never mind. I guess there is a bad Israeli song from the 80s. Here it is. Totally doesn't fit. Nah, I'm not a fan. Let's move on. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> this song cracks me up. No clue what they're saying though, but the strange song and the choreography is just epic. I mean, you kidding me? Nah. Ah, yeah, 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 I remember this one. This song has a, a fun traditional sound to it. I'm a fan too. Yeah, I like it. 
Oh yeah, those were the days when kids were still allowed in Eurovision. He actually briefly forgot his lyrics uh, during the song, uh, but I love it. Anyway, I don't speak Hebrew, so I'm just mimicking the sound. Aww, by 80s. Time for the 90s. Uh, underwhelming start. Not into this one. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah! So, 91 was a three-horse race. Um, Israel was so close to winning that year. And it would have been a great winner. Would have been a great winner. Um, this is just amazing. So good. Mm. You know what? This one is just a tad too noisy for my ears. I think it did pretty well. It's just not for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, I remember listening to this one for the first time and I was like, oh, I love this. This is good. Then I saw the outcome. It totally flopped at Eurovision. Not cool. I love it. I love it. My winner of 1995. And this is perfection. What a great build. The progression, the melody, the harmonies. Powerful. Israel at its best. I love it. You know what? This was the first year I actually watched Eurovision live. And um, I was Team Kiara for Malta. So when Israel won, I was super upset. I was pissed. But now in hindsight, I'm so glad it won. It's just the perfect winner. A milestone in Eurovision history. Go Dana! <laughs> oh, a happy birthday song. Yes, we need that at Eurovision, right? I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, not a masterpiece, but enjoyable enough to entertain me at that night. I don't go back and listen to it, though. Oh my god. Israel, listen to me. I love you. I love you big time. But this may be the worst song in Eurovision history. Definitely bottom five. Let's pretend this song never happened. So bad. Um, you know what about this one? The live performance was bad. Really bad. But the studio version is actually quite nice. Not the most memorable song there, but not bad. <laughs> oh, I remember Israelis were disappointed uh, when Sari, uh, what's her name? Sarit Haddad, she went with a ballad rather than one of her dancey music that she's known for. I like it though. It's like this typical peace ballad in Eurovision, but totally works for me. Alright, so you know when a song is so trashy, it's almost good again? That's exactly how I feel about this one. It's bad. It's kind of fun to watch anyway. A little bit of a train wreck. You know what? This was the first non-qualifier -quali shocker in Eurovision history, I think. It was uh, the first year we had semis, and this was a sure qualifier. I like it. It's a bit odd when he switches between his operatic and regular voice, but it's, it's decent. I'm not worthy! I'm not worthy! Oh my god. She was amazing and my personal favorite, Israeli favorite in the 2000s. This would have been a great winner, but it was just such a strong year. Ugh, I love this more than you'll ever know. This one flopped big time, right? I don't hate it as much as others. Um, it's kind of gospel -y and I like that, I'm into it, but it's just not executed that well. Oh god, I remember this. The world is full of terror. If someone makes an error, he's gonna... They did make an error by sending this song. Mm, no. Mm. Oh yeah. Here we go. Way better. Way better. What a voice. Yeah, that was really good. I like this one. It took him back, to, brought them back to the finals. You know what? I'm so glad we had juries that year. This is a really pow a powerful peace song. It actually had a great message, more than some of the other schmaltzy ones. I love this, and I was so mad at the televoters that they didn't appreciate it. Aww. Harold Scott, he messed up vocally, didn't he? I remember that. But it's a solid effort. 
I enjoyed it. Uh, it was one of the pre-favorites and just didn't do as well as we thought, at least in the televote. Ugh. Why, Donna, why? You put that stain on your legacy. Not cool. This was just a really bad song. Ding dong. Uh, you know what? This quirky song to me was fantastic. I loved it, especially the whole staging and camera work. The juries appreciated it, just not the televoters. But I'm a fan. <sighs> Beautiful voice. My heart broke for her from around when she didn't qualify. But I wasn't surprised. It was just, it just a tad too unremarkable. The song that is, and uh, it's, it's pretty though. You know what? Mae Feingold has so much personality. I love her as a person. She gave me this big hug during the interview in Copenhagen. I just was never into that song. Uh, it was a shock non qualified though to many people. I was kind of expecting it. Ah, oh my god, that's the year Israel turned things around for them. Before I leave, I will show you Tel Aviv, one of my favorite Eurovision lines ever. This song is so much fun, party song. Yes. This was perfectly performed. I mean, it's... It's not my kind of song, it was a bit whatever, but come on, he sounded great. It deserved qualification, and a lot of people didn't have it on their radar. And yeah, good for them. You know what, Imri is such a likable guy. He was always smiling and very polite. The song was also a deserved qualify in my opinion, they put a lot of work into this. Now I don't think that this song will age well, and it almost feels already outdated today, but hey, it was good. Ah. Queen Netta, you earned this one. I'm so happy for her. Look, this may be a polarizing entry, I get that, but I'm Team Israel on this one. It was staring and in your face. I'm a big fan of taking a chance and being different, and Israel delivered. So we're going to Israel, yay! All right, there you have it. Uh, my review of the, I don't know how many songs, songs from 1973 to 2018. I keep forgetting how many good songs Israel had sent to the contest. I love Israel in Eurovision, I love their music, and I'm glad that we're going back. Well, I'm going for the first time, but you get my point. But I would like to hear from you as well. Who were your favorite Israeli entries? Leave your thoughts below uh, in the comment section and hit that subscribe button and follow us on social media. And thanks for watching and have a good day everyone. Boom!